Hello and welcome to everyone. Today I'm not here to show you anything fancy that Swift can do, but instead I'm here to talk about something that Swift is really capable to do, but that it's not there yet, and I'm talking about being more present around creative people. We know that one of the goals of Swift is world domination, yes and it makes a lot, a lot of us really excited about it. But the reality is that we are far away from that. And one of the aspects that not a lot of people, especially developers that, that, that make like applications, iOS applications, maybe we can think about, oh, we really want Swift on the server, and there we stop there. Then if people more crazy maybe even think, oh, I want to run Swift on the browser, and thanks to WebAssembly, we may get there someday. But apart from that, there are some things that are simpler, but they just need support. This is one of these things. And if I'm mistaken and it's already there, please tell me, because it's one of these things that I really want to be mistaken. I want to be wrong about this, because it would be really cool to have Swift as another way of doing this processing kind of programming. So what is processing? Processing. I discovered processing, I think, when I was in university. One of my flatmates was using it to interact with some Arduino thing. I was really surprised when I saw that how easy it was to start writing code and interact with, with, uh, with the Arduino machine like directly. It was just a simple environment. You just wrote some code, interact with some libraries. The, the syntax was simple. The API was simple. You just get shit done. You can see here the list of things that make processing so cool. Like it's built around the idea of making interactive programs like 2D, 3D, interacting with sounds, interacting with hardware. Easy. Easy up to the point that its main aim is to help designers, like creative people, people that has not a huge background on programming and it and they shouldn't. The idea is that they shouldn't need to have all this background just to do interactive applications. You may have seen things like this used for like visual DJing, like where you go into a party and it's not even, it's not only the music that it's amazing, but they also have like visual stuff, like projections and all that kind of stuff that it's, it changes with the music. It's all this kind of stuff that creative people wants to do and things like processing allow to. Recently, P5 has been the, the most successful part of it because it brings all these ideas from processing into a JavaScript environment and obviously into the browser. This allows, this makes coding accessible for artists, designers, educators. It obviously has interactions with the, with the HTML and the DOM, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about why we don't have this in Swift. It was thanks to this coding challenge from the coding train YouTube channel. I sometimes watch videos from this guy, like it's a really interactive way and, and, and super enjoying to see how he teaches people how to do like, not applications, because that's what sometimes we focus too much in, but instead like crazy and fun ideas that you can do with programming that brings the fun part of programming that some of us forgot about it. So in this challenge, he ends up making a clock that looks like this. With processing, it's really simple. It's basically like calculating the, the angles based on the current seconds and the current minutes and the current hour and just drawing it on the screen. Something really simple, honestly. And I was wondering, I want to do this in Swift just to follow this, this video. And I don't want to do it in JavaScript, obviously. So I was thinking, okay, do I, what I have to do? Okay, I could, I could use a playground, an Xcode playground. I could even do it on the, on the iPad. And that's one of the things that Swift is almost there. Like we have these beautiful playgrounds, these amazing applications that when they work, allow you to write quick code and see the results immediately. But then I was start thinking, okay, how do I draw things on the screen? I mean, I need to use core graphics. And Core Graphics is an amazing API, but it's a super old API. Swift has this conversion layer on the API syntax, but still, you need to deal with context, you need to deal with radians, 
there's a lot of things that you need to be aware of before you even start coding. What T5 does is it removes all this crap. So I took a look at the implementation of this guy and I thought, okay, I basically need to be able to run this code in core graphics. Here it is. This is basically the same implementation as the video was doing, but instead done in Swift with a thin wrapper on top of core graphics, we could call it, that runs in a playground. And as you can see, it works. And you can check the code, it's really easy. So I, I borrowed this idea of a sketch from P5 and I basically, you need to create it. There are things missing. This is not the entire P5 API or the processing API. This is literally just the implementation of the functions that you see here, end of the story. And I, don't, I didn't even try to make it Swifty. It's literally just a two hours project that I did. So for example, you cannot define the size of the, of the canvas, uh, but you can define the angle mode. And that's because this is one of the painful parts that you have when writing these kind of things that you always have to think on radians. But we usually think on like degrees. So that's why I wanted to actually implement this functionality and see if it how easy it was to be done. And it's pretty easy. And then you just have like background, some translation and rotations. And then you basically have literally the same code that the video has, which you can check here on this GitHub repo. And yes, this is running now on Xcode and I'm talking about running it on an iPad. But if we do this, like it's super easy to have this API and just change the core graphics implementation for something else. Like the day that we can be running this on Windows or on other graphic context, it, it's pretty straightforward and we can make sure that the code is still running. It is still working no matter what's the backend of it. The Swift community should stand up and we should start making this kind of interactive programming possible and not only possible but make it so it was an, a first option for people that wants to do this like imagine if we we can run this code same code on an ipad and it's a really nice way to teach to teach kids how to code like i know there are things on the ipad to do that are maybe similar but I think there is a lot of value on porting the ideas of processing and P5 into our Swift community. And in this way, being a step closer for Swift into the wall domination goal. And that's it. I just wanted to show you this because I think it's really important and it's something that it's aligned with the goals of Swift. So it's something that is there, it's something that we should aim at, like help creative people do these amazing clocks. But yeah, I think it's really important. And again, as I said, if this is already there, if this already exists, if it's super simple, as simple as processing or P5, please tell me and I'm going to update the video because honestly, this is something that I really wish I would be mistaken. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you later.